before I go broke trying to help everybody, I'm going to help the people that, you know what I'm saying, that I struggle with first. First person that I, that I struggled with was myself. You are now listening to Surround Gore MD. Gore MD. All right, guys and girls, welcome to part two, Femoral Arterial Access, the definitive guide. Now, back to what I was saying. What is the most important thing to know about femoral arterial access? The answer is location. Location, location, location. You want to stick the common femoral artery directly over top of the center of the femoral head. Why? Because you want to be able to compress the site after the procedure in order to achieve hemostasis. Sticking low is not ideal, and you definitely don't want to stick the profunda femoris artery, but sticking low is not nearly as bad as sticking too high. Do not stick the external iliac artery. Do not stick above the inguinal ligament. You can have some serious problems with uncontrollable bleeding. And if you don't believe me, I will tell you guys a tale of woe very soon. Okay, so finally, let's break down this angiogram. You've been staring at it long enough. All right, so here at the very top aspect of the screen, we have the common iliac artery. Okay, it's therefore named because it's common to both the internal iliac artery and the external iliac artery. Here we can sort of see the internal iliac artery branching off here. It's sort of coming towards me into the screen. And you can see a nice prominent branch of the internal iliac artery, which is the superior gluteal artery. You can see it coursing out this way. So as the internal iliac artery comes off, this artery becomes the external iliac artery. All right? This runs deep inside the pelvis. As we trace it down, we come in here and we see two branches. We see this branch coming out laterally, which is the deep iliac circumflex artery. You can see it taking the curve of the iliac bone there. So that is the deep iliac circumflex artery, the DIC. As we come medially, we see another branch which comes out and takes a sharp turn and, and drives uh, cephalad. That is the inferior epigastric artery. Okay, we can see that there. So where these two arteries come off of the external iliac artery, that demarcates roughly where the inguinal ligament is. The inguinal ligament will run kind of in this region right here. So below that, the external iliac artery becomes the common femoral artery. All right? That artery becomes superficial. It becomes a advantageous place to percutaneously access that artery. And as we follow this down, we see the common femoral artery, again, branch into the two branches here. One we see medially, which is the SFA, or the superficial femoral artery. And then as we come out laterally, we can see the profunda femoris artery. We know it's the profunda because it has multiple branches in the thigh, and we can see here a prominent branch going out to the femoral neck. All right, so between this branch point and underneath the inguinal ligament, we have the common femoral artery. We can see that it's superficialized, and you can see here this five French sheath entering this vessel pretty much at the level of the femoral head, and you can see this is a very nice access. Now, just to drive the point home here, here I have a sagittal MIP image from a CTA, and we can see here the external iliac artery turning into the common femoral artery. You can see here the common femoral artery and its relationship to the femoral head. We can see that as we come through the skin, we have a good place to compress that vessel as we pull out the sheath. And you can see that if we access that external iliac artery deep in the pelvis, we do not have the ability to compress this against a bone. This is where you can get uncontrolled bleeding in the pelvis, a retroperitoneal hematoma, which could lead to death. And I usually don't like to use fear as a motivator, but let me just say, I have personally heard about a case during my fellowship where an interventionalist stuck the external iliac artery, caused an RP hematoma, the patient died, and that case went on to a lawsuit. You can avoid all of those troubles simply by making sure that you access the common femoral artery directly over the femoral head every time. All right. So I want to end this with a tale of woe, something I personally experienced where I knew that the access site was over the femoral head and that was the only thing that helped me to keep a patient alive. So you can keep watching, you guys are watching Sorel Garmd.